All right, let's dig deeper into this and other issues with Florida Republican Senator Marco Rubio. Senator, thank you so much for joining us. So the, the Biden administration is, is saying very emphatically, wasn't us, we didn't do it, don't, don't blame us. I mean, you've got a moment here in Cuba where you could stand with the Cuban people and maybe try to bring about some change. Why doesn't the Biden administration do that? Well, I hope they'll be more forceful in that regard. I think they've said that the Cuban government needs to respect the right of people to express themselves, but I think we need to identify with their pleas. And let me just make one thing clear. There is no embargo on food. There is no U.S. embargo on food. In fact, last year, Cuba imported over $300 million of food from the United States. I think they were their second largest trade partner when it comes to food. The reason why people in Cuba have no food is they have fertile farmland there. The, the reason mm -hmm. why they're having food is because Marxism doesn't work. Everywhere Marxism has been tried, it's led to hunger and suffering and poverty, and that's what's been doing to Cuba for 60 years. So one island over from Cuba, of course, Haiti is falling apart. Here's what the Florida Governor Ron DeSantis said about it earlier today. It has been like pulling teeth to deal with some of these federal agencies, and the reality is you have an easier time getting into this country illegally than you do just to be rescued as a United States citizen. How the hell does that make any sense? So there's about a thousand Americans who are trapped in Haiti, can't get out. The State Department, for the most part, is saying, we've been warning you for four years not to go there. Now you want us to get you out? I mean, so private enterprise like in Afghanistan is doing it again. Yeah, so there's a couple things at play. The first is I think that the administration needs to be more forceful, leaning on how we go in and help get Americans out. There's a couple problems. The first is you got to land somewhere. The airport is being constantly threatened and some, on some days has been under the control of armed gangs. And then you've got to coordinate with their government or what's left of it in order to be able to land somewhere and get that clearance, you know, in terms to make sure your planes aren't crashing into each other. And the third complexity is a lot of people that want to get out, a lot of American citizens, they don't live near the airport. They have to travel to get there, which means they're going to have to go through checkpoints that are controlled by gangs. And the fear is that now they become uh, the targets of kidnapping. So it's, it's a really horrifying situation. I mean, some of the things we're learning about on a daily basis going on in, in Haiti are apocalyptic, are the kinds of things you yeah. see in horror movies. Yeah, it's been like that for a long time. So we've got two problems. Yeah. We've got the problem of you know, Haitians and the plight on the island, and then we've got the potential threat of hundreds, if not thousands, of Haitians trying to escape and make their way to Florida's shores. But back in 1994, when Haiti was facing a crisis, Bill Clinton pulled the trigger on sending in the 82nd Airborne, and the crisis was resolved at the last second. Do we need to do something like that this time around? Well, I know we have contingency plans to do things like that, but I don't anticipate that happening anytime soon. I don't think there's a, any strong push to have U.S. military forces entering Haiti. Um, there's supposed to be a group from Kenya that's coming, but obviously they need to be able to have a police department or a government that they can link up with in order to provide security. And look, Haiti's 700 miles away from Florida, so what we're talking about are very unsafe, rickety boats that people would get in. But right now they couldn't even do that because the gangs control all the access points to the ocean. And so, it's it, look, it's horrifying. There are no easy answers there. I think our number one obligation, obviously, are for the American citizens that are there. We have to have a plan to help get people yeah. out, no matter what that takes. And then I think there's after that, it gets really complex. Uh, there are not a lot of easy answers in Haiti, unfortunately. No, that place has been a mess for decades. I want to ask you quick, quickly about the TikTok ban, because the bill is there in the Senate. Uh, Tom Tillis, the senator from North Carolina, got this phone call the other day. Listen here. If you ban TikTok, I will find you and shoot you. <laughs> um, that's people's jobs, and that's my only entertainment. And people make money out there, too. You know, I'm trying to get rich like that. Anyways, I'll shoot you and find you and cut you into pieces. <laughs> I mean, it's just very frightening that you get a phone call like that. But the flip side of that coin is that if what critics say is true, and this is a tool for the Chinese Communist Party, the infiltration to cause somebody to make a phone call like that has meant that the Chinese Communist Party has succeeded beyond their wildest dreams in ingraining this potential spy tool into American society. Well, what people don't realize is that TikTok is owned by a 
Chinese company named ByteDance. TikTok is just our American company, TikTok US. Yeah. ByteDance doesn't just control TikTok, it controls the algorithm, which is the artificial intelligence engine that picks the videos you see or don't see. And what we know for a fact is, number one, that the Chinese intend in a time of conflict to use social media to try to influence Americans. So imagine those calls coming in saying America should not help Taiwan or America should not uh, take on the mm -hmm. Chinese, you know, because so that they, they intend to do that using social media writ large. In the case of ByteDance, the Chinese company, under Chinese law, they have to do whatever the Chinese government tells them to do. If the Chinese government tells them, we want you to target Americans with this message, those are the videos we want them to be seeing, they have to do it, whether they want to do it or not. So we should not allow an app that is owned and controlled by the Communist Party of China to operate inside the United States. Now, if someone else ends up owning ByteDance or owning TikTok, that's another thing. I may still yeah. think the videos are annoying or whatever, but that's free speech. But what we can't have is the Chinese Communist Party controlling the algorithm that can drive people to make calls like that today, but make calls in the time of conflict at, in, the, in the rate of a million, millions of calls like that in the future and, and manipulate American public opinion against the interests of our country. And, and one quick question, real quick, just before we go. I was told weeks ago, and now it's being reported by other places, that you're on Donald Trump's shortlist for a running mate. And I'm wondering, are you ready to change your voter registration? <laughs> Look, I think anyone who has a chance to be the vice president of the United States should be honored by that. But I have not talked to anybody, uh, either the, the president or anybody on his staff, about that. So I don't know where this reporting is coming from. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes you're the last to know. <laughs> Senator, good to talk with you. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.